Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm TZ Sweezy, also known as Sir Pinkbeard on Twitch. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to uh, do transformations on objects and how to add and remove them from the scene. Now, the bulk of this video will be looking at uh, the transform section, but we will get towards the end uh, the new add and remove settings and things like that. So as I said in the previous video, there is no more object manipulator when you select an object. We used to get a little Z, Y, and X axis marking, uh, but now you have to go and actually select that tool in order to see it. So you can select, uh, let's just go to the transform tool here. Now the transform tool is a good tool uh, and it will allow you to choose any of these options here for transforms, you can simply pull along an arrow to move uh, in that axis's direction or axis direction. You can pull along the uh, kind of arc here to rotate in that direction, or you can drag on the box to scale in a direction. Now you can leave the transform tool on and active uh, as long as it's selected and you're fine. Or we can look up at the top here and change some of these settings. So maybe we want the transform tool to only show us move and scale. So what we can do is we can simply click on rotate, shift click on rotate, and it will turn off. If we single click on rotate, then all the transform tool will show us is our rotate option. Now you can also set a drag action for the transform tool. So let's go ahead and turn all of these on. And so you can just set, okay, we've got it selected. I'm not gonna pull any of these. And if I click and drag, it will move the object. Or if you were to rotate, click and drag will rotate. And scale should also scale. If we click and drag in a direction, right? And it's scaling and moving uh, uniformly and rotating kind of in any direction. Now, if you were wanting to say, lock any of those transformations to a particular axis, let's say we wanna rotate only around that X axis, we can hit uh, any of the hotkeys or we can change the drag action to rotate, start rotating and then hit X and it will drag and uh, rotate only around the X axis. Or we change that to Z or Y and it will rotate around the respective axes there. Now notice I'm not actually uh, adding these, so I'm hitting R to enter into rotate, and then Z to lock in the axes I wanna rotate around. But if I don't want to rotate around these axes, I can simply hit right click, and it will cancel the transformation that I've recently done. So uh, while we have these options here, you might find that, you know what, you don't wanna accidentally rotate when you mean to drag. So we'll grab the move tool, and this will allow you to translate objects within your viewport. And so you can just simply click on the arrow and pull it around in the axes. The hotkey for this is G. And once again, uh, once you're moving it, if you wanted to constrain it to the axes, all you have to do is press the letter of the axes that you want to move it along. Same thing with rotate. You can use the rotate gizmo to uh, rotate, or you can simply hit R and constraint to an axis. Um, we'll talk about the difference between global and local axes later, but just know that the orientation up here is referring to global, local, uh, normals, or whatever, but we'll talk about that in a future video. And then you also have the scale option here. Now, when the scale uh, gizmo is active, you can actually click inside this middle circle here and scale uniformly, or you can grab and pull and scale along a particular axis or axis. Here's the thing though, with just the transform tool, this is actually just to be a movement. Uh, when you click inside the white circle, there is actually not a uniform scale with the transform tool itself. All right, so uh, something else to note is that when you're using the transform tool, you can select multiple objects and the transform tool will move in between those objects. So if I select all three objects, now you can see the transform tool is roughly in the center of where the cube, the light, and the camera exist in the scene. And that can be pretty helpful. So that way, if you wanted to move multiple things but keep them the same distance apart, just select what you need and drag. And it's going to keep those in the exact same positions relative to the uh, object manipulator that we've got right here and you're good to go, right? And just once again, uh, before we move on to our next section or to talk about the next thing, uh, the hotkeys for movement are G, 
rotation is R, and scale is S. Now, uh, because the movement is essentially called translation, or you like you can translate the objects, uh, it's not the T key, because remember that the T key toggles our toolbar here on the left-hand side. All right, now, you've probably noticed, and I mentioned in the last video, this object in the center, this red and white circle, called the 3D cursor. Now, the 3D cursor is actually a pretty powerful tool, uh, but right now, if you're new to Blender, don't freak out. You can simply shift, right-click, and move that away uh, from your working area because it can get in the way visually. So you can do the shift, right-click, or you can actually grab the 3D cursor tool and just click along. And then you can choose uh, either a surface project so that it extrudes to the surface you've projected on, or you can turn that off and just kind of click it wherever you want. And it's going to assign it to the closest spot in 3D space where you click. Now, if you move your 3D cursor all the way out to nowhere and you want it to return to the center of your screen, simply hit Shift and C, and the 3D cursor will return to the center of your scene. But for now, that's all the information you need to know about the 3D cursor. We'll get into that a little bit more when we get into um, snapping and creating new objects. Um, I guess the one thing that you do need to know about the 3D cursor as we move forward is that new objects, when they're added to the scene, will be created at the location of the 3D cursor. So if we move the 3D cursor up here, and then we go up to our Add menu up at the top in the Viewport header, and choose Mesh Object, let's just add in a UV Sphere. The UV Sphere is added in at the point of the 3D cursor. So we, again, we move that 3D cursor, and we can add in, uh, let's just add in another one. Let's go with a cylinder, and it will add in this mesh at that position. So that's just something to keep in mind. Wherever that 3D cursor is, is where the new mesh objects that you create, or lights, or camera, will be created. Now, if you don't want to go all the way up here to the Add menu, or to the Add option, and then click on the object that you want to add, you can actually bring up a smaller menu by hitting Shift-A. And when you bring up Shift-A, uh, you will be able to get a smaller Add menu, which will allow you just to work in this area. Um, and not have to go all the way up to the top to choose what you want to work with. Now, sometimes you might find that it's actually, you know what, let's do this with the monkey head. So you might find that you like the monkey head, oh, and we'll go ahead and delete that. We'll talk about deleting that in just a second. But you might say, all right, I've got one of these, I want another one. So what you can do is you can actually hit Shift-D to duplicate it, and then move it around. Now, if once you're moving it around, you can also constrain it to an axis if you just wanted to slide it over on the X axis. And maybe we do that again. So Shift D, duplicate, and move it over one more time on the X axis. Now, remember the thing I said where if you were to try to move this and then right click, it would cancel that movement and uh, place the object back where it was. That's not the case with a duplication, because the duplication is actually a macro. And a macro is something that, uh, it's just one thing that has a couple of processes in it. So the cancel, the right click or the escape, will only remove or cancel the current thing that's happening. When you duplicate, what's actually happening is the object is being created, and then you're instantly entering into a transform mode where you're moving the object around in the scene. So if I were to then right-click and cancel that, the object actually exists in the exact same position in the 3D viewport. So if I hover over these, what you'll see is that, oh, uh, let me just hover over that. What you'll see is I now have two Suzannes and the light uh, selected in my hierarchy, and they are just on top of each other. So that's something that is very important to keep in mind uh, when you are duplicating objects, is if you duplicate it, and you cancel it, it doesn't cancel the duplication, it cancels the translation. And then let's say you cancel it and you're like, oh shoot, I don't want that. You can delete objects in two ways in uh, 2.8. You can either select the object and hit the delete key, which will remove it, or you can hit the X key, which will bring up a menu and just ask you, are you sure you want to delete this? Now, the X menu is a little bit more useful when you're working in edit mode, which is what we'll get into in our uh, next video series. But just know that those are the two ways that you can delete an object from Blender. 
And if you've deleted something and you're like, oh shoot, I shouldn't have deleted that, Control-Z will bring it back. Uh, however, I would warn you that there is a limited number of undos in Blender. You can't undo infinitely. Uh, and so you, I, I think we've counted, you get roughly 13. I don't know if there's a, a specific number in the documentation that tells you how many undos you get, but there is a limited number there. And then if you want to redo something, control shift Z will redo it. So if we, let's say we move this on the Z axis, we put that up there, we undo it. We can control shift Z to redo that action. And this completes uh, the basics of using Blender 2.8. In our next video series, we are going to be talking about how to create uh, mesh models or do mesh modeling in the modeling workspace and how to use these tools and how they work and what they do. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video.